turn this on and record in here. Ooh, we are recording. Okay. I guess we better do our introductions. Patty Candich. Marjorie Lee. Scott Sylvester. Bill Antonoli. Helena Gagliano. Uh, Sue Peterson. <coughs> Chuck Lardy. Okay, would someone like to make a motion to approve our minutes? Like someone second it? Okay, Aye. Second. Second it. Okay. All right, my son, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Beaver Deer Hill. Deer, Beaver Head Deer Lodge National Forest. My son is a board of director on the Intermountain Logging Conference, and they met in Washington a couple weeks ago. All the big shots come from all over the Northwest, Oregon, Montana, Idaho, Washington. And this is, they talked a lot about our forest. Now, the Beaverhead Deer Lodge National Forest is in eight counties in Montana, and we have about 420,000 of this forest right here in Granite County. This is what they said. It was a big topic over there. It is one of the most unhealthy forests in the West. The Beaver Deer Lodge National Forest is not a carbon sink anymore, but a carbon emitter. You know what that means? Yes. Yeah. It's all dead. The Beaverhead Deer Lodge National Forest has the least fires of any fires in the, in the West, but has the most dead and dying trees. The mortality is so great that the more trees are dying than growing, it is no longer sustainable. This is a scary fact here. In fact, they said the forest is ripe for one of the most catastrophic fires to come along in a long time. They linked it to the 1910 fire that killed a whole lot of people and burned up three million acres in Washington, Idaho, Montana, and parts of Canada. So they didn't have too much nice to say about it. You know, it's like they said, it's, it's the, the most unhealthy forest in the West right now. And what do they base these? This comes from the Forest Service. Oh, from the Forest this, Service. This is Forest Service. Yeah, we when I say big shots, this the big shots of the Forest Service and the timber industry, they all meet at this, this conference. So some of that's the bug kill. In fact, I would bet a lot of it is the bug kill. Oh, absolutely. And then, um, you know, I've heard that maybe this isn't true, but my view has always been if you have a lot of dry wood out there, it tends to burn up fairly easily, you know, and there's, there's a lot of dead, dying, dry wood. Well, it, this one has the most dead trees in it, and like it's not, it doesn't take carbon out of there anymore, it's putting it out there, so. It's disappointing when the Forest Service, um, when they get together a sale to cut these beetle kill trees, and then it gets litigated until nothing happens, you know, it's, yeah. it's just disappointing. There's a big one in Montana that was being litigated, I forgot over by Elliston, maybe, and they have a picture of it. It's all dead trees, just, but it's being litigated. You know, they won't let us in to clean it up and all that. Now, the other thing I want to talk about last. Well, uh, are, are you done? Could I say yeah, to, go ahead. to Jill, to yeah. uh, Bill's point? I've also read that actually trees that are alive are more flammable than the dead because of the pitch content. Have you guys ever seen articles on that? I'm sure there's a, yeah. You know, because they really torch when it's dry and they have all this pitch and mm -hmm. climate change, did that enter into it? That that um, I mean, I oh, sure, I'm it. sure it did. That contributed to the, right. um, the dead trees, you yeah. know. Now, I remember when we first moved to Rockford, we had like, this was almost 50 years ago, we had like 50 below. We had 45 below. It go on for weeks and weeks at a time. You know, you remember that, you know, how cold it was? That probably kills the bugs a little bit. On the other hand, in parts of our country where there is uh, a much warmer climate than we have here, I have read that that's, that's where a lot of commercial uh, logging and forestry goes on because in South Carolina, for instance, trees grow like crazy. Well, they do. And here they grow a lot slower. Very slow. You know, so global warming, in my view, is a, is a fact whether it's good or bad, it's probably both. One good thing is our property will all be worth more here, the warmer it gets, and the trees will grow faster, I think. Well, if we got, in South Carolina, they get more rain than we do, though. I mean, there is, 
the turnover on those trees is like 20 years down south. That's right? like Oregon too. Yeah, yeah there's they have better soil. Uh-huh. You're down there's, from there. There's quite no, a factors. north of north of there. Oh, okay. Well, there's good news too. Oh, good. There's spots on the sun. Time. There's spots on the sun. <laughs> it's called solar minimum. We've okay. known for a long time that when these appear, yeah, and this is going to be a grand minimum in 2020. We're coming into a horrible cooling pattern that we will we will regret probably. The the well, crops won't grow as good and it won't be very pleasant. Okay. I don't like the cold. I like the warm. Yeah, I really do. Just, well, I mean, our feelings have nothing to do with it, but I'll make sure we don't turn the bulls off until maybe August. <laughs> no, I said 2020. I know. We'll You're saying for a while. The cow's going to be born, though, in 2020. Oh, okay. So maybe the ranchers ought to be aware of that last year. Yeah. This last well, year just go look it up soon. Uh, it is a, actually, okay. they discovered it. It's called solar minimum. They discovered it in 1600 that every time spots appear on the sun, there will be a, a severe climatic change. And there's like eight different minimums. Uh -huh. And they appear every 11 years, 70 years. Okay. Or, or you know, but there is a climate, it's like the Meadowville warming period, the ice age. A little ice age with the solar Yes, it was. Okay. And they know now it does affect, you know, the solar minimums oh, yeah, do affect the climate. Okay. Okay. Well, I know in the, in the little ice age, the glaciers advanced tremendously in in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. Well, the Thames River froze over in England. Oh, it was you know, awful. There was starvation. You know, yeah. there's a lot of, there's just fluctuations. I mean, that's all there is. I like it warm better than I'm going like a cold. Maybe there's hope for Glacier National Park after all. They'll grow yeah, back. That would yeah. be good. We hope so. <laughs> Bring the glacier back. I don't like the cold. I really don't. Okay, last month we talked about we'd have a speaker, and I this other guy couldn't make it. But I've been in touch with uh, two speakers. They can do it in June. Uh, Sean Steinbeck, he's a service forester for the DNRC in Anaconda. He's the Anaconda unit. And Brian Morango, he's the Southwest Regional Director for Montana Logging Association. And I believe they spoke at your uh, Montana Wilderness. Is that who you belong to? Yeah, I do belong to that one. Some other groups. Yeah, I, I haven't think, gone to a convention. I think they spoke, uh, Sean spoke at that group. Okay. Yeah, they're really good speakers. They use PowerPoint and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, they said they can do it. Should I go ahead and tell them to set up a date with them? In June is when that they sounds, said they could. That sounds terrific. They're right. really good. They do really we want good. them both the same day? Yeah, well, they oh. come together. Oh, I see. They okay. really add a lot. So, so who's the other guy, Larango? Uh, Brian Larango. Brian Larango. He's yeah. the Southwest Regional Director for Montana Logging Association. Keep in mind, 15th of June, that's my birthday. Oh, you're going on your birthday? I'm turning oh, okay. 70, and so I could be dead. <laughs> Are you turning 70? Or you could be drunk, uh, one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's that too. Yeah. Always a possibility. Everything's a possibility. With me. Okay, is it okay if I go ahead and, uh, is there some dates that wouldn't be good for you guys? I know it's going to be during the day. You know, that's what I want to ask them. Uh, when do they have their best uh, people come? Is it in the afternoon? Is it evening? Uh, what do you guys think? I'd make every effort to, to be present no matter what the okay. time was. If we could just have it on this Wednesday, because I reserve this Wednesday for, for this, you know, for this meeting, my calendar's pretty full. So have it on our meeting day? Right. Oh, have it on our meeting day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On a Wednesday. Right. All right. I'll try. Yeah. I'll try. So if it's going to be meeting day, I'm guessing a good time would be 2 p.m. I think so too. Like when Tim Love came, you weren't able to do that one, but we had a pretty good crowd, didn't we, Elena? We, oh, you know, right. probably 15, 18 people. Well, I remember when Carrie White came, that was the afternoon. Right. We and were loaded. With right. People. And if it's well advertised. All right. Um, okay, Scotty, what should we do when I get it all set up? Shall I go to the um, newspaper and yeah. put it in the paper again? Sure, that would be great. Of our speakers? Okay. Um, and uh, do we want to have it at the museum or up here? What do you guys want? Doesn't matter to me. There's nicer bathrooms at the museum. Right. We have to pay a hundred dollars. Heidi's already got this place reserved for us. I think. Oh, did she for the speaker yeah. for June? For June, June. Okay. but we could change that. If, yeah, the museum would be put up by Yeah, yeah. And they got nicer bathrooms too. These are right. kind of up and down the stairs. And it's hard for people to you know, right. get up and down the stairs. 
So um, I have to um, decide when they can speak, and then I'll call the museum and reserve. Okay, is the museum open now? Oh, I don't know. Because don't know. TJ Detour will yeah, take up for her home. Do you, do you have TJ cell? I don't. Do you? Okay. I do. I, yeah, I don't have my phone with me, and I don't have the internet at home anymore. What's what's your cell number? Um, 406-560-3367. So I will text, and if I forget, ask Bill. I'll text you TJ's number, and then just set it up with her. Okay, I don't text out there. Okay. I have no cell service. Okay. I use my, but you could leave a message on my phone, and I'm sure I would get it if I Right, what's your home? It's 406, oh, 859. Do you want her number right now? Yeah, it'd be nice if you yeah. have it. I mean, and, Phil has it. That's and, good. Oh, wait. I was going to have you read it, but look okay. at that. It's 560. 560-1799. So she's in charge of the museum, huh? She, she is. She books the dates, and she, um, All right. and you can call her in the evening or whenever. Okay. Okay, I will. So you, uh, it's not going to be at night when more people can come? What do you think, Elena? Would you well, rather have just there's the people at work? You know, they'd probably be in. That was a complaint that day that we all met here, and there were a lot of people here that day, but a lot of people that did work couldn't come. What do you think, Margie? I work, so I make time for this meeting. My mom is bored, so I understand. Yeah. So you would like it in the evening? I, I think we'd probably get more people that way. Yeah. You know, my son, he's going to be my MC for me. He works during the day, too. He knows these guys, so he's going to introduce them and all that. So that would be nice maybe evening. I know these. I know Brian Laringo personally, and I know he has a day job, so. Okay. Doesn't he have to take off? I would say so. I would say so. Okay. So you know Brian, huh? Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Should we shoot for the evening then? Hey, either is fine by me. Okay. Sure. 10 p.m. <laughs> seven o'clock. Okay. Seven what o'clock. about seven o'clock? Yeah, seven sounds wonderful. Seven o'clock. Um, yeah, seven o'clock. Okay. 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 Just another picture of 1910 fire. How to cat? We just have no idea how a fire could be so catastrophic. Well, well look at California no. just last year. It was <sighs> that bad. Oh, it's terrible. Okay, I, did you guys get my emails that I sent? Okay, um, Linda Bach, she sent, I printed it out for everyone, I'll send this around. But why don't you take one of these, this is what she said about our road policy. And this is what, uh, you can read this, this is what she, I'll take one and then you can send this around each one. That's what she wants to put in our growth policy. Uh, we put too much in that one. We have too much, and she said she had to trim it down a little bit. But when we do our natural resource, resource policy, then we could put a lot more in it about the laws and coordination and all that. Okay. Thanks for printing this. Yeah. yeah. Patty, you bet. And then last month I asked, I said we need, Linda said we needed a mission statement. So Elena sent in a mission statement for our coordination and I'll send that around. I thought it was pretty good. So we got that then. So what does that have to do with, do we change our bylaws then? No, no, oh, this, this, is, this, no, this is, is for coordination. Just for the coordination. Yeah, right. just remember we're going to use the um, natural resource policy we get to work on it, you know, with a lot of things in it. And that will be our mission statement for that. So, but you guys can all read that and see what you think. And let me know what you think about what Linda, I wish you all would read that now and let me know what you think, what she's going to use. It pretty much covers, but she said she couldn't use the, everything that we sent in our draft. I ended up with three of these papers. Oh yeah, you're going to send some around. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh -huh. Well, on Linda's, on page one, objectives, recognize that the cooperating agency status of Granite County 
And they got the other bullet. And I don't know, maybe that's supposed to be one sentence. Recognize the coordination. Which one are you on the page one on the mission? It's exclusive to elected government officials. Require federal and state agencies to complete consistency. This is on the, the one that she rewrote. Yes, that's okay. the one she wants to put in. So on page one, under objectives. Yes. Yeah, one, two, this three, looks like this was taken. Down. This looks like this was taken directly from the Cook County. Yeah. Um, okay. And that's exactly what they did in here. Okay. Okay. So they you can see it here. Yeah. So it should follow that that should be. Is that okay? Then? One yeah. sentence, right? Yeah. Which one should be one sentence? I... Yeah. Where are you? Read it again, Elena. Okay. Under objectives, page one. Okay. The uh, one, two, three, the fourth dot down. Yeah. Okay. It's a dangling sentence, and I think that uh, it should be work and coordination. Oh, I see. There's oh, no one, right? Not a a bullet under that one. Should so we recognize that cooperating agency status of Granite County work in coordination with federal right. and state. That should be one, huh? Yeah, I think so. Okay, and also if you go down to, um, I underline it. Work on including private individuals. She's kind of got collaborative groups mixed up with coordination because uh, it's, you know, you can't bring private, you know, individuals. It's only for elected officials. Collaboration is for, you know, private interests to come in and... How much one are you reading? It's on the front page. Work on including private individuals. She's trying to get that into coordination and you can't. It's elected officials. You know the laws, but but we we do recognize that the public lands belong to everybody. I mean, is that in there anywhere? Uh, that would be in our natural resource policy. This is just strictly coordination. But the first one in our objection: recognize that coordination is exclusive to elected government officials. They're the only ones that can go and use coordination. Right. To sit down on an equal, oh, she didn't put equal basis in this. And I think that should be included. Don't you guys agree with that? Because we talked about that. I remember I didn't have that in there. Should I tell her we'd like that included in an equal? Equal basis. Well, it's exclusive to elected government officials. I would think that's. Well, that's in the law. If you read each one well, of those, yeah, I think that's sufficient. But she put work on including private individuals. You know, they can't coordinate. Private individuals can't coordinate. But they can influence elected officials. Oh, well, just absolutely. Like we, just like yes. we do. But I they mean, can't sit down on an equal basis and coordinate with the federal government. Nor can we. No, we can't. Yeah, That's even we can't, you know. Can. Yeah. Right. All that. So, um, it's only, uh, a lot of people get collaboration mixed up with coordination, you know, because, and any one of us can go to the county commissioners and, you know, say, you know, I really would like this done. But only they can, you know, your elected officials can coordinate. So, Elena, is this your mission statement? This is what you no, wrote? No, that's not my mission statement. Okay, because I never got that one. Was that, was Elena? Which one are you looking at? I look at coordination. Did you say Elena had written a mission statement? Yeah. Oh, did you get one? I never got one. All right, now. Okay, here. Right. You can use that. Okay. Well, that's my well, I thought I, I thought I did enough. So we should all have one. Yeah, I thought everyone got one. Did, uh, did they get stopped? Did someone get two? Maybe someone got two. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, then did someone I'm get two? Jam, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Did you get one? I am. All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to go see Linda Bach right after this meeting. And so I'll, I'll tell her our concerns on this. So you guys, I found it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, now. Okay. You guys should read this what Linda addressed to me, and then you'll understand why she cut back on the 
the coordination deal mm -hmm. and what she wants us to do. You know, it seems as if we're talking just coordination. It should be just coordination. Yeah. Because that's all this is, is just coordination. Everything else, um, let it burn, the forest, um, working economy with jobs in local communities. What does that have to do with coordination? This should all be part of the land use. She said that, you know, if you read this that I sent around, that a lot of this stuff, should probably just be put in our land use policies. Right. So, this is what she That's said. That's just yes. benefits of using coordination. She put that in there. What should I tell her about that? I don't know, but um, I think she kind of wanted it in there so people could see the benefits of it. You know? This is going to be discussed at the planning board. Yes, it will. And by the way, you're all invited June 6th to go to that. We were invited last Thursday. They didn't it was have on the agenda. But they didn't have it. There wasn't a quorum, I guess. But the agenda. Yeah. But that, there wasn't a quorum, but we still were there. According to the agenda, we were supposed to be there with Phillipsburg, to, the town of Phillipsburg, to discuss the addendums to the growth policy. And nobody can win, right? I sent something around asking, did anybody attend? And nobody went. Okay, so we should have been there. We have to be there to discuss this with oh, her. Yeah. So, Elena, how come the ad in the Peabrook Mail didn't match the agenda that was in public notices? They were like totally, totally different. There were two of them, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, but they didn't match up. I thought that was interesting. I was gonna ask somebody. That's the way these things are done in oh. this county. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. One has an ad that said one thing, and I was going crazy because I know it said somewhere about the Phillipsburg and the Fire Service that was, addendum, that was, and that was in the legals. Right. So, and like, yeah, they didn't match at all. No. I, I, okay, I wonder. Just like the agenda that said something about the FMAC grant, well, that wasn't the FMAC grant. It was a mistake. Then it was. <laughs> I'm glad you keep keeping track of that. I, I you know. It depends on which direction the wind's blowing. Yeah. <laughs> When's that planning board meeting again? June 6th. And I don't, what time are they usually? She did 6 o'clock. Okay. Are they in the court house? 6 o'clock. And where do they have them at? It's up here. In this room? And it's uh, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. June 6th. And the purpose of this is be a Thursday. First to Thursday. explain what coordination is to the group, to self. To the group. Well, like that's the um, the other ones that are doing the, the growth policy. Who are who would some of the people be on that? On the planning board? Yeah. It's AJ Nicholson. Yeah. He's the chair. Tom Rill, mm -hmm. um, Tom, Tom John Spade, Tom. Is Spade, John Spade is there. But uh, Tom Sanders. Right. Oh, Tommy Sanders from Rock Creek. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, Susan Hale from Drummond. Okay. She hasn't been showing up, so okay. I hope she stays. In order. And Christensen. Yeah. He Jim hasn't Christensen. Been, Jim Christ. He hasn't been showing up either. Is Tom Rill still? Yeah. And Gail Luther. Oh, is she on there? She's on there. Do I have a preview board? So speaking of agendas, I think that our agenda, I think we should put something in our bylaws about posting the agendas. You know, do I think they should be posted 48 hours in advance? I mean, are they posted? I mean, I know that. Yeah, the draft ones I email out the first draft. My uh -huh. key one is on the website where it comes. Okay. Okay, good, good. But I just wondered if physically do people post agendas anymore? You mean like this like event on, coming up? Right, like on the um, at the post office. 
Oh, putting notices down there. Right. <coughs> you know, like the airport board does. And the, um, I'm not aware of how people post things in town. Yeah. So. That's a good because not everybody has the internet. Not everybody well, right, right. I mean, I just think it would be a good policy to post it publicly. What, what do you think, Elena? I think it should be in the newspaper, personally. Yes. And I think anybody who doesn't, and I've already brought this up, if you don't have a computer, the county should put an ad in the paper saying, contact Mike Cahoe, get on a mailing list, and you get it mailed to you. Or and that way it used to be. They did that. Right, because it'd only be a half dozen people nowadays, but you know, yeah. it's, they're still important. And as far as putting it up at the post office, there's not many people that go to the post office, except mm -hmm. if you live in town. Yeah. And supermarket doesn't put them up. Right. That'd be a good job for you, Sue. <laughs> well, I mean, I would put it would up you at do Drummond. That? Yeah, in Drummond. Yeah, at the Drummond yeah. Post Office. Yeah. I think a lot of people down there would come. And well, listen. I mean, I just think it's good practice to mm -hmm. let people know. Not to keep it so secretive. <laughs> well, right. Well, we don't need to. No, but no. Who, not very many people look on the website. But maybe it should be in the legals. Yeah, uh, you know, the cost, it costs a certain amount of money, doesn't it, Scott, to post something on the newspaper site? Um, depends on where you post it. But uh, just on the legals? No. Well, I'm sure we can make a deal. Yeah. You know, like the hospital, the second page, full page, every I think week. they had to pay for that one. <laughs> They're paying for it. It's amazing what they're doing with their money. Mar Margie, you said that you put it directly onto the website? No, my key. Oh, you send it to me. Yeah, I don't have access to it. Yeah, I'm not Well, any more on this? Well, I'll start posting them um, on my own at Drummond. Do you want me to start posting it here at this? I don't. I think it'd be a good idea. Okay. I, mean, I think it'd be good. Better than not. Right. right. So, which one do you post though? The, the draft, right? Because well, the, I wait a few days to hear back. That's right. Like if you just print out a copy and post it. Yeah. I, I think just the just draft. Yeah. It rarely changes. So any changes or anything um, that could be discussed at the uh, planning board meeting? Everything, because that's probably what they're going to discuss, hopefully. She said all the stuff that we put in our natural resource thing will have all the laws and the regulations that go with the coordination. But they didn't want it in this. So. I was kind of disappointed that they didn't put some of the NEPA laws, you know, and all that, but that will go in the natural resource policy. Well, that could be a reference to it. Mm -hmm. And that should be done. Mm -hmm. A reference to land use. Mm -hmm. They will have that plans. All that should be a reference to it. The thing about this, um, it's, the focus is real narrow, it's more the industrial use of the forest, but um, recreation is huge, and it's important to our county, and That's that right. isn't addressed at all. Yeah, it is, at the very last. Um, provide hunting and fishing and other recreational opportunities. This is just a really trimmed down deal. But Sue, when we do this, you can write a whole deal about recreation, saving the forest, everything. It's in here. Uh -huh. And that's what we're going to do. We can use the whole thing she told us. Well, lucky us. You, ha you have this, don't you? You still yeah, have this. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, just go through and, and you can write anything you want to put in there. Okay. This is just about coordination. This but, isn't about the other. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I just don't like it. Stop special interest groups from unduly influencing federal agencies to shut off access to our natural resources. Well, what is shutting off access? Your idea of shutting off access is totally different than a bow hunter's shutting off access. Uh, we're getting the, gates all over. They aren't even wilderness areas. We're being shut out every day, and so is every other county. We're being shut off of our 
areas that we have roads that we can four wheel in, we can go hunting in, and Bill knows some of these areas. Well, I think that's what they're talking about. Right, but you know, we've got hunters, we've got the people that want to ride their four wheeler up and shoot an elk 30 yards away, and then we've got real hunters. And I'm talking about the real hunters. And, um, you know. You mean like what, hiking in or? Right, hiking. Well, I mean, they I can know. hike in if they want. <laughs> but, yeah, but you're not yeah. going to have uh, the wildlife. You know, if you have access to four wheelers, and you guys know that as well as I do, you know, you know it, Margie. It, it changes things. And so I. But you also hike. Yeah. And, and it changes things um, a lot. I think they're talking about the locked gates. It should be our land, should be open to us. We pay taxes on it, it's our property. So if you can't drive on like it, a, you can't drive on it, you don't think it's open to you? If they got a road that I paid for, and they put a gate across it, I object to that. I feel I should be able to have access to that because it's my property. I don't mean going off through the forest with a four wheeler. But they do. Well, I'm not this forest nowadays. <laughs> Yes, you do. You yeah, can't get do. through it. So how do you get through a forest that's like this? Well, it's terrible. So what about rough. the people that like to go muddy? Go what? Muddy. Where they take a really pretty little wetland and yeah. totally destroy it. You know, there are always going to be bad people, but that well, doesn't mean that good people should be locked out. Well, when you, when I, 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 I wouldn't do that. Are you going to sacrifice those places? Uh, you know, Sue, you I live out in the wilderness. Uh, we log out there. We're oh, out that's there hardly there. called the, that's hardly a wilderness. Well, where we log, we go way back where the grizzly bears are, the elk. I have yet to see any four-wheelers ripping around in mud holes and all that. I haven't seen that. Well, I really don't see that. It Maybe happens. once in a while, not very often though. Get I some pictures of it. wilderness areas when I was a lot younger. <laughs> and uh, me and a bunch of guys, we and we would live off the trash piles of people that left stuff in the wilderness areas. Live off the trash piles? Oh yeah, really? we got pickled over one time oh. and all kinds of stuff. And that was just like, we've been out in the back country for a couple of weeks. That was heaven. Yeah. <laughs> So oh, get some pictures so, of that. You know, I want to see that bad where people. it ripped well, I'm up. I'm saying the bad people all the way so. Right. I, I agree that with the bad people comment. But to just, go back to the growth policy, if I may. Sure. Um, when, background on this growth policy, okay. When this thing was done, it was done by a person named Jim Richards. And Jim Richard, Richards basically did a cut and paste job from a whole bunch of other growth policies. The growth policy stunk, and there's a lot of things that were left out. And one of the things that were left out, because if you look at the Montana Code's annotated 76-2601, I believe it is, it says that coordination has to be put into the growth policy. Now the coordination, looking at this, that Linda put in, and includes the town of Phillipsburg and the town of Drummond, yes, coordination between the towns has to be put in, which isn't in there now, okay? But coordination with the county, the towns, that is kind of separate kind of thing. It it's is. a coordination, yeah. okay? And that's what should be kind of brought out. So the only thing that's in here is to me uh, invoke coordination to influence federal and state lands, okay. Prepare land use regulations for coordination, okay. That's that doesn't like, make sense to me, prepare that's land what, use regulation for that's coordination. That's with the forest and land use, okay. And but between the towns, that's like something different. It's more like collaboration between no, the towns. No, don't mix the two. Are you sure? We elect town officials. They're elected, Got it. right? Okay. So they These are elected are. officials coordinating. Exactly. Got it. Okay. So in other words, you've heard about the good neighbor policy, haven't you? Authority. Yeah, good neighbor authority. A pop. No, this is the good neighbor policy where you can call oh. somebody at the road and bridge and say, "I know that my road isn't a county road, but can you come and plow it for me, <laughs> pretty please?" And they'll come and plow it. And if the town of Phillipsburg needs some gravel, even though they have their own road work and stuff, 
Well, the county can come out and help them out. Good neighbor policy. Well, you got two jurisdictions. You got the town and you've got the county, and you don't step on each other's toes. So that's why you need a coordination to say, yeah, we'll help each other out. Mm -hmm. And that's in the girls' policy. So that's between the towns. I, I remember and the reading county. that in the girls' policy. About okay. That coordination. Yeah. So. But that's a different one, like you said, from this. Yeah, but it's coordination. I don't think it's in the in the in here at all. No, it's not. I thought I did read some. So coordination. This is the whole thing. It's time for a change. The census is coming up. This thing was a joke to begin with. I kind of agree with John Spaeth. Either get rid of the damn thing, or if you're going to do it, do it right. I had my say. I don't. I don't know. I read it and I thought it was uh, actually a pretty nice document. I thought it, I liked it because it wasn't too invasive. You know, right. not right. regulatory. Right. I, I know. That. I, I like, like that, that part about too, that. and they appreciate it. Yeah. The natural resources. I like things simple in our town. Well, right. that's the whole that point. Way. They did it. But, but, Dana, you want a little bit of the history of it. Um, in order to do your zoning and everything else, you had to have a growth policy. And Georgetown Lake was pushing for zoning at that time. Things are changing up there, you know, around the lake. There's just so but much. That, but, um, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, God, the one that, that was a commissioner. At oh, Bart? 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 No, the one... A while ago, he... Bad Ground County? Yeah. Oh, God, come on. Oh, uh, how long ago? Oh, Barry? <laughs> what the heck was his name? It was a guy, not Barry Carnahan. Barry Carnahan. Okay. Okay, him. He didn't like this thing at all. He didn't like it. And when they were going to revise it, you know, time every five years, he said, it's been sitting on the shelf collecting dust. Let it stay there. That's it. Let it stay there. But since that thing went in... They found ways. It opens the door to a lot of things. That you a don't lot of grants. Yeah. Right. A lot of stuff that thing is mm -hmm. bringing in the growth policy. But grants aren't necessarily bad things. I, I know you don't like them, but. Well, not even just grants. I mean, the policies that they have, you know. Um, here's one thing that we stopped. And I know this is off the subject, but we stopped this Tuesday. They were going to have that Naval Works garbage. Um, and here's something oh, about that poverty dialogue. Oh. Okay. See, and that all had to do with that thing. And, and it doesn't cost the county money and all this. Just do a resolution that you're going to allow it. It was going to open it up big time for, they want to call it affordable housing. Well, it's low income housing. And they said, well, once you bring in the low-income housing or the affordable housing, that's going to be good for the economy. Well, how is that good for the economy? People come and move to a place because there's jobs first. Then they think about, are we going to live there in the schools and the hospital? You don't just put houses in there that's affordable and everybody moves here. And we're not like work. sustainable if development. If you build it, they will come. Yeah, really and one of the things are you are you talking about like sustainable development bringing this in because you have to this is all I'm not even gonna go <laughs> there okay but this yes is all part of this the yeah. sustainable neighborhoods and smart this and smart and here's a clue Missoula city of Missoula oh, so loves awesome. this they are eating it up Hook, line, and sinker. So does that say something for it? Yeah, don't drive on their roads down there at 5 o'clock. Well, <laughs> That's the first it's, time a, so. it's, it's a way to increase votes for the Democrat Party. Well, I don't mind saying it. You know, the... The, the, the two parties are just as bad as each other, as far That's as right. I'm concerned. H have I ever mentioned to you, my brother Ted, the philosopher's mm -hmm. view of the two Santa Clauses? <laughs> no, you guys, I have to go at 3 o'clock. Sure. Okay. So, uh, the two and, Santa Clauses okay, you have ahead. to hear. Okay, you've got 15 minutes. And you're about to oh, it, it only takes one minute. Okay. The Republican Party and the Democrat Party are the two Santa Clauses. The Republican Party... What they do is, 
they are in favor of tax cuts that we can't afford so that people keep money so that so that those people will vote for Republicans, even though we haven't balanced our budget forever, <laughs> and and we don't bring in near enough money to finance the government that we have. The Democrat Party, they don't believe in letting people keep their money so that they're going to vote for you. They believe in taking money from people and distributing it to the people that will vote for them. Okay? And that is just as bad, as far as I'm concerned, as, as not bringing in enough revenue so that you hope people will vote for you. It's just as bad to take money from people and then distribute it to the, to the ones that you feel will vote for you. This is why, this, this, this is why there's a push in our country to, to legalize all immigrants, you know, because immigrants tend to be more dependent on, on government services, on, on handouts, at least while they get going, and they tend to vote Democrat. Okay, this is why Republicans generally want to tighten up the border and Democrats, you know, let her rip. But neither party is, is without blame here, you know. It's just, it, it's all about money and votes. As far as affordable housing, the Naninis built their towering whatever it is down here at the Granite Turnoff, okay? And trespassed on city property also. I hope they got that worked out. Anyway, that thing just filled up right away. Yeah. And have you ever wondered why the sign says everything's included there? Okay. Section 8. That's what right. Did, what do you mean by that? They get government subsidies. The government will subsidize if you have, if you have, if the rent includes the power and the water and everything else, then you, as the owner of the building, the Naninis, then they maximize the, the flow of government money to themselves. Mm. That's how that program works. And so I'm not going to bore you with any, but the, the tale of two Santa Clauses, the Republicans are just as guilty as the Democrats, but That's why we they have have, <laughs> each party has its own way of trying to get people to vote for their party. But That's why I'm a libertarian and I never win because I'm not promising any money to anybody. That's right, so you're, you're screwed. <laughs> but, Bill, have you noticed the deficits only matter if there's a Democratic president? Otherwise, it's, it's not even an issue. Well, it matters to me. It matters to me, too, but it, it doesn't matter if it's a big shot. Social Security, you know. Someday it's going to matter to a whole lot of people. Well, debt. that's why I started taking it early. Because it's yeah. not going to be there. That's not neither is Medicaid and Medicare. Absolutely, Medicaid for all. You can't even afford Medicaid for the people that get it now. How would you, you know, afford Medicaid? You know, I've been to two all? emergency rooms in the last two weeks with Joe. The one in Butte, the doctor took care of him. He was exhausted. He said because Medicare doesn't pay for doctors anymore, everybody's going into the emergency room, which is free, and they use that for their office call. And, I mean, he was exhausted. He said there's not enough doctors. People are not going to college anymore to be doctors because it's so regulated. So then we go to Missoula. Same story. That doctor was so damn cranky down there. I couldn't believe it. Same story. Overworked, not enough doctors, and nobody's going to school to be doctors. So all this free health care, it ain't going to be there because we're not going to have doctors. Right. We've it's ridiculous. Had, we've had health care for all in our country already. My buddy Jack Byer. Has never had health care except maybe when he worked at the, you know, no health insurance. Had a couple of really expensive procedures. The hospital won't turn you down. Okay, if you go to the emergency room, you're in. So he has, I don't know, a five or six hundred thousand dollar hospital bill right now. I I wonder if he's even paying twenty dollars a month on it. That was universal health care. 10 or 15 yeah. years ago, okay? You and got a doctor. <laughs> it's not ideal, I guess, but the hospitals would just eat those uh, bills and raise the cost of everybody else there. So I don't know if that's the, if that's the best way, you know? The, the, the idea now seems to be 
single payer. It won't matter. You're not going to have we're, a doctor. We're getting off the yeah, we subject. Are. And I, I'm sorry. I wasted that, five that, minutes. That's okay. It's, but Medicaid expansion has helped the bottom line. And it, it supposedly has helped the people that don't have insurance going getting their primary care from emergency rooms, which is terrible, terrible for, for our society and for the hospitals and everybody. I feel better about it as health care was in this institution. I had two cases over a long period of time right. of young ladies that got pregnant uh -huh. to a, for the purpose of getting a low-income house. And I oh. found this out, well, actually, I dealt with tribes and the whole bunch, but I uh, had uh, one guy go to the emergency room and he got ibuprofen. I said, why don't you go down and buy some? He said, well, if I go to the emergency room, they give me a prescription, I get it for free. Well, you know that's how much that costs. Yeah, I, I know, and that's that the system is so broken. It yeah, help. it is. It's it, broken. It is absolutely broken. And Granite County Hospital, Hospital. 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 2017 and 2018 got $1.7 million dollars from Medicare and Medicaid. How much did they get? $1.7 million. Dollars. Mm -hmm. Just this hospital. Way to go. Well, I pay workers comp. They estimate a third of all workers comp claims are phony. I don't know if you do or not. We had a guy file on us. He got bucked off his horse. His kid told me and he filed on us. Oh, it was terrible. We tried to object. Couldn't. He got it. And he even admitted to Joe. He said, I know I lied, but I needed the money. What would you do, Joe? Oh, so it workers happens. comp is through the ceiling. I mean, it's yeah. horrible. So we are, as you said, we're, we're off the subject. So I'm going to go talk to Linda and tell her this will be okay for, you know, what we're going to talk on the 6th, you know. Because she doesn't want a whole lot on just basic what coordination is with the federal government. Is that okay with you guys? That's fine. If I can on the 6th, so I will, you know, I have a slightly different take than you guys do, and yeah. I will express that. All right, so we did the new business. The sixth uh, suit okay. isn't to object to right. it. It's right. to explain what coordination oh, is. Okay. okay. That's all that is. Right. <laughs> but yeah, we're, not, we're not talking any the, policy so background we're, on it, though. So what is the background? Is it America's so we stewardship? No, no. This is lost. Right. But I mean, it's in our bill. So we've got them all except the uh, second to last dog. No, no, it didn't. I'll show you. Where is mine? Because the thing I got on coordination right on the cover, it says American Stewards and Liberty. Sue, Patty. Here is federal laws mandating coordination. The National Environmental Policy Act, it talks about coordination. The Federal Land Policy Management Act, coordination. And the National Forest Management Act, EFMA, gives us coordination with federal government. It didn't come from what you said, the Liberty. They got it from this. Mm -hmm. But it is law. And we don't want to go there and object to that. That isn't what this is about. We're going to push coordination because it is the law. And we're not and we're not talking about natural resource policy or anything. Just coordination. I'm, just, wanna, gonna, I'm just gonna be upfront. If I go, I'm gonna say what I think. Well what do you think? I I think that we have to be really careful. I get these emails that people support the Hammonds and what they did in Oregon. Uh, I think what Clive and Bundy stealing from the government is obscene. That's all we cleared. Sorry, that, that is Well, I still think it's obscene, and we and don't court. want that kind of stuff in our country. Yeah. Well, that has I nothing to do with coordination with the forces. It does, so though, because it's the same. Okay, sort of wait. Boost. As far as coordinate, this is one of the next meeting agenda items. I want to put on the agenda that I want to discuss exactly what this group is supposed to be for. That's what I want. Forced advisory to the county commissioners. We are, so far we advise nothing. The county commissioners seem to do what they want to do. I so was I gonna, want clarification. Now, I would like to uh, recant on that. I was supposed to go in and tell them what we want. I was going to advise them and tell them about coordination, but I didn't make it. So we were going to do that. So why are, we, why are they hiring a forester? You know, I went through this whole meeting. It'll be up on line on YouTube, that meeting um, yesterday. They hired a forester? They're thinking of it. That's what that grant is about. Well, if they hire a forester, maybe we could stop coming to these meetings. Exactly. That's and what my thought is. That's let the forest. I would rather be home. I <laughs> okay. It's All such right, a legal right. deal, this coordination. Not everyone knows how to do it. Our county commissioners don't know how to do it. 
but this guy we hire is equipped to understand coordination and how to deal with the force. He will do it in a legal way. If, if our group only accomplishes one thing for the whole time that it's in existence, if that thing is alerting to the commissioners, alerting them to the fact that they can require the Forest Service to coordinate, to consult, to to include them in on the planning of, of what they do. That's what we want. I would say that we that we did a good thing. If that's the yeah. only thing we accomplish is to that's alert the commissioners to the fact that they they need to, I like the word there, invoke coordination. Mm -hmm. The Forest Service isn't going to coordinate shit unless the I commissioners know. go to them and say, there's these federal laws, they require you to coordinate with us, and we want to be included in the planning process. If we can just get the commission to do that, I would say, hallelujah, brothers and sisters. We did a good job. And you know, when we get it in, what they did in their coordination, uh, they within 30 days, they sent a deal out to the Forest Service, letting them know that we are invoking the status of coordination. And we need to have that in our deals, too, that once it's passed, we need to let the Forest Service know that it's legal now. Right, the commissioners it. need to And it's always been illegal. The yeah, commissioners refuse to follow the damn law. The whole point of this, let's go back a year ago. Why were we here? What was our whole point? It had to do with the Wilderness Study Area and Steve Daines' letter, right? That right. was the big push for it. But we've gone so far and now from what? that. You know, it really, no, that wasn't the only reason. It was the forest fires around here that we all Now we were there before we started doing it that was before all the fire. It, was all it the did, it did bring areas. us there, but we did talk about the fires. Something needed to be done. We you did know, it, and, I'm, I'm gonna, and I think Sue will back me up with it. The county commissioners, as usual, put something on the agenda for 10 minutes. How about a half an hour? Okay. And we're going to approve the letter from Dane, Danes regarding the wilderness study area. Do you remember that meeting? I absolutely got her up because yeah. Danes. It was packed. It was. Danes thought that the commissioners were just going to rubber stamp what he And they asked were, the, had intentions of doing that also. Yeah, right. Until they saw that mob that showed up. Right, right. <laughs> right. And, and that's an odd way to do politics. Instead of, um, it, you know, it, it comes from Danes. He goes to the commissioners, asks them to verify what he's saying. And then he goes back to Washington and says, the Grand County Commissioner said this. I mean, that's low. That is just low a low way and that's where they how they do things right I mean, and it's, it's how they do things I yeah it's not they do everything well i'll tell like you that. it's hard to get anything done we have to vote on everything wait a month vote on another thing you know it's it's really hard government well that's why the commissioners have a meeting every damn week but nobody no, shows up but they have no work session i'll have to say one thing about the good point that really one thing about the environmentalists off. is they get word out I and think, everybody shows up. I think the other side gets their word out pretty good too. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, but it just goes to show you how much the forest means to everybody, and everybody should be included. I, I'm not a member of this. Do, you know, we can have this is public. But we enjoy public your comment. We need that. Go however, ahead. two points. Um, first point is that my impression, having been at the commissioners' meeting. Last week, when this subject came up, is that they fully grasp what coordination is all about okay. and are looking forward to the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, second point uh, that I think should be made in front of the planning board is that um, coordination has to be included in the growth policy plan in order for it to take place. This you, doesn't say that. So, um, so one should be, I'll ask her that. I thought that's be what sure to bring that up. So okay, that they, I thought she said she wasn't going to put this in the growth policy. And then the other thing, that's why they want it early, but I'll well, ask her that. should be made that, clear to the planning board. Yeah, that that's, that, again, that goes back to what I was saying. According to Montana Code's annotated, when they introduce this this zoning 
crap and this growth policy crap. There has to be coordination between the towns, and that's discretionary. If Granite County wants to coordinate with Phillipsburg, that's their decision. Phillipsburg can say, I don't want to coordinate with you. We're a separate town, I'm not, we're going to stay that way. But when we talk about federal and state agencies, coordination is the law. And that's the difference. They don't have an option. That's the law. Sue, why are you against coordination? I just would like to find out more about it. It, it seems, again, like with the Hammonds, and I know Zinke cleared them. I, I think what they did to that wildlife area is criminal and destroying the sacred sites and, and that kind of stuff. Um, Why I, were they cleared? I heard they were. Zink, I don't know because Zinke's, um, his politics go that way. But Zinke's history now. Yeah, right? he is. But he cleared yeah. them. He, he cleared the Hammonds right before he. He it was, went to was court. Astrogite. It was cleared in court. But it I went mean, to court. And they were found yeah, it innocent. Did go, I do remember that. It did go to court. And a, as a matter of fact, now, if, as far as grazing, they want them to start grazing the land because of all that grass that's grown back, and it's a fire hazard. They even made the, um, mm -hmm. the um, BLM has uh, asked if they would open it up for grazing again, or that they will open it up for grazing again because the, the they didn't graze on those lands. They, they made a big fuss about it, the BLM, and uh, that's what's happening. But I hope they pay for it. Like Bundy's, to me, that's just stealing, um, using public ground, and then not paying for it. You know, when we had a horse permit, I wouldn't dream of not paying my bill. I just they even so that's a lie. They pay. On the other it. hand, Sue, but they I say don't. they don't. You know, there's I two sides to every story. I think it's a stretch to from. say that somehow if the commissioners invoke coordination with the Forest Service and thereby um, asking the Forest Service to share their planning process and get input with the county, I don't see how that is going to bring our own version of the Bundys or the Hammonds to Granite County just because we're trying to get the Forest Service and the County Commission to talk to each other. Right, right, and, and, I, and, and I, I see your point. The, the problem I have with coordination, and, and when I'm done, I want to know how many other counties do it, but um, I'm gonna write myself a note because, you know, senior moment. And thank you, Patty, for, for asking my opinion. It, it just seems like in these small counties, we have these county commissioners like the ones that we have. It's not like in Missoula or, or the bigger counties where you have really educated people. Um, and I would tell, it to their, tell that to their faces. It's just the focus is so narrow. And so you, here you have these narrow-minded commissioners that don't take the long view, that don't think about recreation. And if their idea of, sure, they're representing the county, but they're not, they're representing a really narrow interest. I, I just like more of a collaborative, all folks involved. I mean, that's the world we live in. You know, the fishermen, the bird watchers, everybody should have a say. Well, I, this, I really feel that if strongly. This, if this forest burns up, too, there won't be any place. It'll be so devastating. Well, you know, and that's And true. everyone thinks it isn't going to happen. They are really worried about our forest. It'll right. it destroy every rancher in Granite County. It'll burn your hay up, your summer pasture. You'll have nothing. Well, of course not. Probably burn your cows up, too. Yeah, of course, you know, nobody wants, wants that. That's why we want to coordinate. So if they go out there and they want to burn 200,000 acres down, we'll say, no, we're going to coordinate with you. We don't want to ruin our watershed. Right, but you I know, know a forest fire, though, I mean, some you seem to think that every forest fire is deliberate, and that's just not the case. Is what? Deliberate. Sue, I've been on them. We fought them. My husband's been fired because they wouldn't fight them. Yeah, he I'm got fired by the Forest Service. We know a lot about it. This is our livelihood out there. Right. I know that, that, that that's one way of looking at I it. I stood right next to a tree burning on Barbara Clark's Forest Service, Barbara Clark's land. It was on fire two Forest Service were standing there watching it. I said, aren't you gonna put that tree up? 
nope, not unless it goes over on private land, then we gotta fight it. They would not put it out. And we have been hired by ranchers to go put the fires out because they know on BLM, they'll just let it burn. I was doing some research about other counties in different places, and I think I kind of like this one statement. This is about the county commissioners in Bonner, Idaho. The board recognizes its mandate provided in Idaho statutes to, one, protect and enhance the public health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the county. That's what their main job is. They don't, of the county, okay? And yes, the forests are enjoyed by the world, but this is what these commissioners are supposed to do. Number two, protect the tax base and encourage the economic stability of the county. And three, encourage the agriculture and forestry industries and other businesses for future growth. So where would Phillipsburg be if we put a, a border, everybody loves a border, if we put a wall about, around Granite County, how prosperous would Phillipsburg be? We don't have a wall. I know, How but if we did, would if it we be did. if we have mining back and we have timber back in the economy? How prosperous would it be? And how healthy would our forests be? Exactly. We so, so we're not saying it's anything. It's terrible what's happening. But you can't, you can't cut your way out of, as long as there's climate change on the table, and I, and I am for logging, but you can't cut your way out of the potential of a forest fire. I don't see how you can. You could cut your way out in five years. So they have so pictures of it. They show in the Forest Service where it's sweet, where it hasn't been logged, it's all dead. It's catastrophic. They show a forest that's been thin. The fire moves swiftly through and doesn't even hurt those trees. Well, it's, it, there's sometimes yes and sometimes no. I've been to areas where there's been a forest fire um, up in the Lincoln Scapegoat. I was there like two years, and the fireweed was like this tall. It was like um, just swarms of hummingbirds. And sure, the timber was black, and and it, and it looked different, but there was a different kind of beauty. It wasn't devastated, and it's coming back. So devastating fires destroy your watershed. It's horrible what it does. It knocks the banks out. It takes big trees out. Fires kill the microbes in the soil. Well, Your yes soil and becomes no. hydrophobic. It won't. S Our water is going out to Oregon right now because it's not sinking in and soaking up in Montana. Well, it's trees hold the moisture too. I mean, not well, if they're dead. You know, they. I'm talking do. dead trees. Well, okay, we can talk clear cuts and trees holding moisture. I mean, there's definitely a lot of opinions here, and none of us are scientists, but I really do have to go. I do too. Is it after three? I think so. Yes. Okay. It is. Well, who would like to make a motion? To help? Well, coordination is more than just the Forest Service, okay? And it's more than just climate change and climate control, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, when Fish and Game decided to put that new fishing access over by um, Drummond, yeah, well, by uh, Bearmouth. By Bearmouth. Even Scott Dunkerson did not want them to do it because it was too far. If anything happened, off right off the highway, drugs and everything else, he didn't want it. A whole bunch of the county commissioners didn't want it. Nobody wanted it. And I had that on film also. Slaughter went and said, and I brought up coordination. And they gave me a damn look, like, how dare you bring up coordination? But Slaughter said, well, you, they're going to do what they want anyway. Who put it in? Fish and game. Fish and game. Fish yeah. and game. You know, and and Scott Dunkerson, he he did not want it. He just asking for trouble. It was already planned. By the time these agencies come with one of their plans, they spent a lot of money on it. It's a done deal. Right. And they don't want to talk and collaborate with you because they're going to sell it to you. With the coordination process, before they do that, you're going to have to talk with us, and the commissioners say to them. This is a problem we have. And that's the whole coordination process. If Fish and Game follow the coordination process, right and if the that's commissioners a really good, that's a really good point. stuck to it, we that wouldn't have that damn thing over there. there. And it's going to be causing a lot of problems right, this I, I, summer. I, 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 Would yes. someone like to make a motion to uh, I move here? I'm sorry to get exactly. emotional about um, that. Okay. But, How many counties in Montana have coordination? Okay. It's a, it's a federal in and their state law. In their growth policy. Practically all of them. 
I've been doing the research on this thing just to show. Right. For I think our Missoula, Missoula County. And, um, does Missoula County so have so I'm going to go with Missoula County. County. That's what they call that's a lot of us. Okay. That's south. That's well, I don't one. know if that specifically needs to be put in the drug policy, but the planning bye. board yeah, bye bye. certainly should be made aware of the fact that it has to be in the drug policy plan in order for it to occur. To occur. Yeah. So, so, so if, they're, if they're asking for somebody from this committee to come before them and explain what coordination is all about, that's the first sentence that should be mentioned. Oh, yeah. Is the whole purpose for wanting to get coordination in the yeah. growth policy plan is so the county commissioners can have the ability to say to the Forest Service, we want to be at the table Equally. talking to you as equals yeah. about your policy going okay. forward. So you've got this grant, which I said I'm dead set against. And if I, if I was basically anybody, I was going to bring it up, they have the 10th. I wouldn't mind getting in touch with this guy and saying, FMAC is not supportive of this grant. If you look on page one, a collaborative engagement, this is the whole thing. Uh, funds may be used to support a new or existing collaborative group um, uh, in which the county commissioners participate. Facilitation, administrative service, subject matter experts. Um, to activities to expand and diversify participation in collaborative engagement. This is all federal talk and state talk. Uh, provide travel st stipends to help local governments with travel costs from meetings or workshops that facilitate project implementation. So in other words, they already got the plan. So we'll give you money just as long as you help us get the plan accepted by everybody. But it's a done deal. And that's why I don't like this the damn thing. Well, I'll have to go home and read it. I didn't read it very good. They all seemed to like it, though, didn't they? Who? Cool. The yeah, only people sure. there were the three commissioners. Yeah, they liked it. I think Bill ran off with my copy. <laughs> oh, which one? Of the grant that Elena was just reading from. Oh, I'll yeah. notice in that grant it says they can compensate volunteers for purposes of the grant. They don't give you the money. The purpose of it, 20 bucks an hour. You, you don't have an extra hour. It's 29. Yeah. So does that mean that every meeting we've had so far goes to the magic comes from the grant? I'm not sure. I don't know. 